Today is Zoro's birthday. And we decided instead of buying him a new scratching pad, we were gonna try to be resourceful and just re-carpet. I was more just curious if this would work. His I existing think it kinda one. has. Yeah, so we just bought a little carpet tile from Menards and then Francisco cut out the old one and stapled it on. So just doing the final touches on that. There's the piece of carpet that we cut it out from. Okay, Zara, is you ready? Happy birthday, dear <laughs> Zara. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Buddy. Come here, bud. No, not you pull me. Look what you got. You want to put some nip on it? Yeah, I kind of thought we would. The boys are getting a little birthday treat. And hopefully he'll eventually scratch his scratching pad. Yeah. We will find out. We'll see how it goes. Happy birthday, Zars! Careful, you know he's a main trunk. <laughs> I didn't get any of that action. Oh, that's okay. He scratched it, but I was too slow to catch it. And clearly, somebody else has taken over. <laughs> Francisco picked up a couple of Fancy Feast appetizers in celebration of Zaro's birthday. Oh, Which one so is fancy. Zaro gonna get? Which one? Probably this one. Ocean fish. We, we should let him pick. Pepper? Let's let him pick. Put okay. him down. See which one he goes to. Okay, he went to the ocean. No, he went to the other one. Okay, you want this one? But I guess you could let him actually smell him and see which one he picks. Okay. Okay, which one you want, buddy? Which one you want? Which one you want? Let's see which one he goes to first. I think he likes this one more. This was the... Yeah, he just like followed that one. Because <laughs> he's so one. dumb. <laughs> you already got it mixed up. I did. Oh, this is the shrimp one. You wanted the one I was gonna give him. Can you get me a spoon or something? I guess you can just let's eat out of this. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes, had no one's forgotten about you. No, this is the shrimp one. He liked the other one. Zara likes the uh, steamed wild, wild Alaskan salmon and delicate broth. We are making mile high lemon meringue tarts in this week's kitchen chemistry. So let's see how this recipe comes out. Here's my completed lemon filling. It was getting a bit scrambled eggy. I guess I didn't do a great job of getting all the whites out. I picked out a few of them and now I just need to fill these little cups. I'm to the whisking part, so barely just started that, but apparently we need to do this until soft peaks form. Hope this is stiff enough. All right, here we have my little lemon meringues about to go in the oven. My mile high lemon meringues are out of the oven. They're dripping a lot. I don't know exactly <laughs> why. I don't think I'm gonna like them. I don't really like lemon curd. I think that that's essentially what the lemon filling is, but we'll try them. Colby's watching the cat drama out here. I guess Snowball and the new cat. It's one of our favorite stops of last winter was one by Calumet Park Beach. And it was all frozen, yeah. Uh, but it was like, the waves were still active. And it was making some really cool sounds and everything. Which is not doing doing now, but we did stuff by Wolf Lake. And Wolf Lake, Wolf Lake is all, is all frozen over. Which is still really impressive. There's still something like, just kind of primal and scary about the entire lake being frozen. We can kind of see it. The crab rangoons that Alice and Bunny. And here's the walnut shrimp. So we came across what we think is like one of the, the birds' winter nests. And there's like a whole mass of like straw and stuff in there. And there are like 20 birds. You can see a bunch of there. But there are a lot more inside. Yeah, there's hella birds in there, bro. Francisco just finished making the spinach and coconut milk dish that um, is inspired by a Fijian recipe. And we had something similar when we were in Fiji. Look at these treats that Francisco brought home for us. It's kind of a pre-Valentine's Day weekend. Aren't they delicious looking? We have Valeros, just got some chips and salsa. I got a hibiscus margarita. Francisco got a tropical colada. And here's the fried plantain with caramel sauce. I got some tostadas. Francisco got <clears throat> chilaquiles. Mm, we got some tres leches for dessert. Piña colada, oh, pina colada tres leches. What's well, a piña colada ice cream, which I think is interesting. 
Today we're on a jam making adventure. We're gonna make some oh, strawberry yeah. jam. Okay, but that's you are gonna Getting some of the strawberries smashed up. Got some of the jam jars sterilizing. Jam jars. I said jam jars. Why not? That's a funny thing to say. Okay, we're gonna add in the no, stir. You gotta be stirring. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. This is the fruit pectin. We're making a mess. No, we're just gonna as best we can. I hope my jelly turns out. Gotta make sure it's real clean. Okay, they've been inverted for five minutes. Time to turn them over. You gotta wait till they're completely cool to see if they've sealed properly. We won't be able to tell yet. Why are you such a weirdo? You guys are so cute. He's very sloppy. That's our boy. He a little drool monster. His face looks so funny. <laughs> Time to open our strawberry jam. Seemed pretty sealed. That was a pretty good seal. Let's check it out. Okay, don't like pour it on my head. This isn't, this isn't like meringue or something. Stiff peaks. And actually, I think our jam sealed correctly because if I push on the top, they don't spring up. So they should be shelf stable. Is it scooping like jelly? Yeah. Oh, wow. Just out for a little Sunday walk along one of the Calumets. We're never really sure which one we're near and came across a little family of ducks. I like ducks. I know you want a farm of ducks. I do. We decided we're gonna make some brownies. So we both picked some toppings. Francisco's got his side here. He got some butter toffee pretzels, some peanut butter. And did you add anything else? No, that's it. So I have some butter toffee pretzels and some marshmallow and some strawberry jam. Oh, and I did a little bit of caramel in the middle here too. Okay, our brownie is done. For some reason, my side where I put in the jelly made it really wet there. So I don't know, it looks like maybe that affected how it baked. We're making chili this week for the MIT kitchen chemistry. Here's my chili, just added some monster cheese and some Greek yogurt on top. Francisco's already chowing down over here. Look good. Look at the fancy, Zorro, get away from here. <laughs> Look at the fancy chocolates Francisco got me for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Babe, you had one chop. Sorry, he distracted me. Oh my goodness. Okay, never mind. don't look at the okay, chocolates. And he also got me this Global Explorer fudge collection with some very interesting looking flavored fudges. Thank you, bub. You're welcome, baby. Oh, your face is over there. I hope there. they're good in my face. I got Francisco some options to choose for his next dinner date. And he'd been wanting some joggers, so I got these from Sheen for him to try. I like them. What do you think? Do you like them? I do. Okay, I wasn't sure how sizing would work for you. Are no, you they're sure they're good. not too tight? Mm, okay, maybe a little. <laughs> maybe a little small. Yeah, you gotta play around with Shein um, sizing. We tried a new bakery for today. Let's see. Rise and Roll Bakery. It's this little Amish place that's uh, over there. Let me see if I can zoom in real quick. Just got a quick selection, and with purchase, you get a free coffee. When I first saw that we were making lemon cheese this week, I was at first just mystified what the heck is lemon cheese. Turns out it's ricotta. So we need four cups of milk. So we're gonna set up a double boiler situation here. I have been boiling the milk and the double boiler for a little over a half hour now. It is still not hot enough. I need it to be at 170. It hasn't even made it to 150 yet. I think I'm gonna put a lid on it and maybe that'll help capture some of the heat better. The double boiler situation was just taking forever. I'm gonna heat this directly on the flame and hopefully that will heat up faster. And I'm just gonna stand here and keep a much closer eye on it 
to get it up to 170 degrees so we can get this moving. That seems to be a lot more efficient. Now I'm getting readings that are in the 170s across the board. So we're gonna move on to the next step. And the next step is adding the lemon juice. I have about a half cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice here. So I'm gonna add that to the hot milk and let it sit for 15 minutes. It's already looking a bit funky. So at this point I'm kind of debating if it's right. Like it has clumped up, but I don't know if it's clumped up enough. I squeezed in a little bit more lemon juice and I'm gonna just mix that up real quick and just let it sit for a little bit longer and then I will strain it. At this point it is what it is. I don't know if it's right, I don't know if it's wrong. I guess I'll just add it into the uh, cheese bag. What is it called? Nut milk bag? I don't know, this is what I have. I, th I think it's called cheesecloth, but I think this is actually a nut milk bag, but it's basically the same thing, right? It's gonna be a little bit tricky just because of how the bag is. So I have to balance pretty precariously. Hmm, okay, there's some stuff in there. I got this ricotta, the curds, hanging up here. I'm still pretty warm, but I just gotta wait till all this liquid kind of squeezes out of it. And then I'm collecting a lot of whey. I'm gonna see if Francisco wants it for anything. It says you could like make a drink out of it, but I don't know what we're gonna do with the whey. Okay, here's my finished ricotta for now. We're here at Gibson Woods and there's all these blackbirds. They're so loud. They're so pretty though, they're so nice. It's like right on the edge of like, cacophonous and pretty. Mm -hmm. 